Yo, what is up, guys? It's your boy Sami here. Today, we are gonna see what if Naruto and Hagaru move our brothers part 2. Hope you will enjoy the video. So, before we start, please make sure to subscribe our channel. So, let's begin the video. High in the mountainous region of Lightning Country, a monastery rested carefully on the rocky peak. Within a garden in that same monastery, two boys facing opposite each other. Both of them stood across from each other in a large dirt circle. Arms forward in a fighting stance, eyes locked, senses alert. Both 12-year-old children knew not to underestimate the other, and that a split second of lost concentration could mean losing to the person opposite. Both boys were bare-chested, showing off years of rigorous training in the form of a muscular upper body. The only article of clothing they had on were baggy woolen pants that allowed for quick movements with minimal resistance. The only thing that distinguished them was their eyes and hair, one having short red hair with purple ripple-like eyes, the other having long white hair down to the middle of his back, and pure white eyes. Both boys also had two horns that adorned their foreheads, both sets being a few centimeters tall. The garden they occupied was silent, like the inhabitants were holding their breath, waiting to see how the fight would begin. It was the one with white hair that started the fight. Rushing forward, he traveled the distance between them in the time it would take for an ordinary person to blink, leaving his opponent no room to move. He appeared in front of his opponent, launching a right kick to the red-haired boy's side, with speed that most would find impossible to keep up with. His opponent though was not most people. Locking the kick with his left foot, the red-haired boy thrust his right arm forward, trying to hit his opponent with a palm thrust to the chest. The keyword being trying. The white-haired one seemed to be able to read his opponent's move, already moving his left hand to grab the boy's wrist. Succeeding, the white-eyed child yanked the other child's arm forward before letting go of his wrist, while simultaneously punching the redeed in the chest, launching him back several meters before he came to a stop. It was stupid of you to try and fight me up close, Hagoromo. You know I'm better than you in that regard. The white-haired one taunted. The other child, Hagoromo, just rubbed a part of his chest where he'd been punched. I know that Naruto, what do you think I was trying to do with that palm thrust? Hagoromo said. Damn he wished his brother didn't punch so hard. Although he thought. It could have been much worse were this not a spar. His brother had recently found out how to channel chakra into his fist, and release it in such a way that when he punched, he could knock down several trees. They had the proof in another part of the large garden that made up part of the monastery. Hopefully I won't have to use. He was shaken out of his thoughts by his instinct screaming at him to move, deciding to trust them he leaped to the side. It was only his years of training, and naturally quick reflexes, that helped him narrowly avoid a bolt of lightning that struck the ground, with enough heat and power to scorch the earth, and throw up a small amount of dirt. Turning to his brother, Hagoromo yelled out at him for his stupidity. What the hell was that you dumbass? You could have killed me. You have to remember that your lightning is far more deadly than mine, and also travels a whole lot faster. Naruto, from across their makeshift arena, rolled his now yellow eyes that were slowly fading back to white. Why thank you for that, Hagoromo, I obviously didn't know that after using lightning for several years. Naruto said sarcastically. You do know that there wasn't enough chakra put in that attack to kill you right? Naruto said smiling, his brother still got angry at the smallest of things. I scorched the ground. Hagoromo yelled. Yes I can see that. Naruto said, smirking. Still doesn't change the fact that it wouldn't have killed you. Now are you going to continue whining like a baby or are you going to fight? Naruto said, goading his brother while falling back into his original fighting stance. Hagoromo said nothing, simply getting back into his own fighting stance. There was a moment of silence before it was broken, this time by Hagoromo. The boy leaned his head back before quickly leaning forward, and exhaling a great breath of orange and red flame twice as tall as the one it was aimed at. Instead of panicking Naruto stayed calm, using his ability over water Naruto moved both his hands back, before thrusting them forward towards the pillar of fire that approached him. Almost immediately two things happened, one was that Naruto's white eyes started to glow blue, the second was that a large bubble of water appeared behind him, the result of water vapor in the air, joining together via Naruto's will, before it moved forward in front of Naruto, and spreading to form a wall of water that blocked the flames with a hiss. Trying to keep the momentum, and not wanting to give his brother an inch, using the rest of the water he hit Naruto pulled his hands back before thrusting them again, this time fingers first. The result was the remaining water from the water wall splitting into multiple small bubbles before elongating into spears that then shot forward towards his brother's position. His brother, who hadn't moved from his position, simply knelt down and punched the ground, causing a wall of earth to erupt from the ground, blocking the water spears. Like his brother, Hagoromo then thrusted both hands towards the earthen wall, causing it to move forward. On the other side of the earth wall, Naruto smirked, instead of dodging around the wall or even destroying the wall like his brother would expect him to do, he decided to try out a new move that he had theorized, would be able to take out his brother, especially if he didn't expect it. Running towards the approaching wall, Naruto left up to the top of it before pushing off the wall, and launching himself into the air. 
As he reached the peak of his jump and slowly started to descend, Naruto gathered pressurized wind into a ball beneath his bare feet while strengthening his legs and feet with chakra internally. Naruto grinned as he approached the ground. It didn't really matter anymore if his attack hit his brother or not anymore, he just wanted to try out his new move. As he neared the ground, Naruto called out the name of his attack. Case Perusu, Wind Pulse. As Naruto hit the ground, feet first, the sphere of wind beneath his feet was, but under amazing pressure because of the combined factors of Naruto's weight, the speed he was falling at, and the solid earth underneath the sphere. Not being able to go up because of Naruto's weight and speed, and not being able to go down because of the earth, the sphere of wind did the only thing it could do. It exploded to the sides. A ring of air shot out from underneath Naruto at breathtaking speeds, kicking up dust, as it rocketed outwards before slowly losing momentum. Naruto stood where he landed, waiting for his brother to appear, and attack her for the dust cloud to settle. As his visibility cleared, the youngest Lissasuke spied a dome of earth roughly where his brother was standing last time he checked, assuming that his brother was still in there, he readied himself, just in time to watch, as the dome retracted back into the earth, revealing his brother. Almost immediately his brother spoke to him, agitation clear in his voice. Are you going to do something stupid in every match? Hagoromo questioned, a noticeable vein was bulging on his forehead, as a sign of his frustration with his brother. I don't know. Naruto questioned back in a lazy voice, clearly trying to annoy his red-haired opponent. Are you going to do something to interrupt a match for things that could wait till later? Yes, his brother replied. I am. Hagoromo continued to look at his brother before smirking, slightly confusing Naruto. I was saving this for a later time, but I guess now will do. As Hagoromo got into a fighting stance, he mumbled something inaudible to Naruto before he charged. Naruto was surprised at the speed that his opponent was now displaying. He was much faster than before. After getting over his brother's speed, Naruto quickly moved out of the way of the incoming charge, before sweeping low with his foot, trying to use his brother's speed against him. Once more Naruto was surprised when his brother stopped quickly before jumping over the outstretched leg, Naruto quickly straightened back up, and engaged his brother with several punches trying to keep him on the back foot so he could quickly figure out what had changed with his brother's combat skills recently, and, if possible find a way around it. What's going on? Naruto questioned inwardly. Hagoromo was never this fast or agile before, what did he do? Naruto then inwardly winced, as he caught one of his brother's punches that almost managed to get inside his guard. And strong, as well. He mentally added. Naruto was quick to backpedal to get out of his brother's arm reach. The only thing I know of that Hagoromo could be using is just, as he realized what his brother was using, the voice of his brother jolted him out of his thoughts. I see you realize what I'm using, Naruto. Hagoromo said, as if reading his opponent's thoughts. And you are correct, the sir path. As Hagoromo finished speaking, wordlessly four extra arms sprouted out of his shoulder blades. Out of all the paths he knows, it happens to be the one I hate the most. Naruto said to himself, though his brother still hurt him, and could only smirk at the reason why. When Hagoromo was first learning how to use the Asur path in one of the prayer rooms, it was just himself and Naruto in the room, as he wanted to learn more about his mother's and brother's special eyes. While Naruto was in the room Hagoromo lost control of the path slightly, the result was his fist shooting off his arm and slamming into an unprepared Naruto's stomach. Hagoromo's youngest brother rolled around in pain on the floor, Hagoromo himself laughed until his voice was hoarse, since then Naruto has steered clear of his brother whenever he used that particular path. Don't tell me you're still upset about the Asur incident. Hagoromo asked, while stifling a laugh. After what had been dubbed the Asur incident, the youngest of Ultsatsuki had told both his mother and brother that if they used that particular path in front of him, with the exception of a spar, he would leave the vicinity immediately. And you wouldn't after being hit in the gut by a flying fist. Anyway, how do I know you have control over that path, and that you won't just start firing fists at me? Naruto said, as he eyed the six fists wearily, as if he expected them to explode. I wouldn't be using the path if I could control it perfectly, and have some faith in Naruto. The eldest Lissatsuki sibling replied to his brother. I did, his brother mumbled. And a fist hit me in the gut. If Hagoromo hurt his brother, he made no move to show it. Fine, I guess when I beat your ass it will feel all the sweeter. The youngest sibling then smirked. Let me show you something else I have been working on recently. As he spoke Naruto's normally white eyes turned a fiery red, and Hagoromo frowned slightly, as he recalled why that was. After a couple of years using his elements, Hagoromo and his mother noticed that when Naruto used a certain element, Naruto's eyes would turn a light shade of the respective element. However the light always got slightly darker, and closer to the color of the element Naruto was using, their mother theorized that the closer the color was the element Naruto was using, the higher the mastery Naruto had over that particular element. But that wasn't the reason Hagoromo was frowning, the reason he was frowning was because during a fight a few months earlier, Naruto was using the elements heavily while fighting against Hagoromo when Naruto suddenly stopped, and his eyes flashed different colors. 
Sometimes both eyes were the same color, other times different colors in each eye. This continued for about a minute before Naruto collapsed backwards onto the ground, unconscious. When he awoke a day later Naruto waved off concerns from both his brother and mother saying that it was just another part of his abilities he unlocked unknowingly by using his multiple elements at the same time. When asked what it was he uncovered, Naruto said that he wasn't quite sure and he would tell them when he was ready and had a firm grasp on what it was and how it worked. It was after Naruto displayed his healing ability that any new abilities that he uncovered, he would be able to practice by himself, as it was unlikely that his mother or brother would be able to help him with any abilities, and so Naruto explored his abilities by himself. That was months ago, and Naruto still hadn't shown any indication what it was his new power could do. Hagoromu got ready for the fire that he knew he would receive from Naruto, tipped off by his glowing eyes. Hagoromu calculated that it would most likely come from the hands or feet, maybe even creating it in the air around him. Instead though Naruto chose to take a deep breath and release it in a blowing motion, the result was a large plume of fire extending out of his mouth. What happened next shocked Hagoromo, the fire twisted and turned, molding itself into something though Hagoromo didn't know what. The answer was soon clear, as fire in the shape of a dragon rushed the six-armed child, with the child barely able to jump to the side. To avoid the impact of the elemental dragon, he was caught off guard, though when the attack exploded just catching him on the edge of the blast radius. While Hagoromo came out of the blast relatively unscathed thanks to his Asur path, he was still signed by the fire. He was left no room to comment though, as a rock roughly the size of his torso was flung at him by his brother. However utilizing the abilities of the Asur path, he simply punched the boulder, shattering it with his strength. Not wanting to let his brother have any more time to launch another attack, Hagoromo quickly stuck his wrist out. Wordless several small pointed projectiles launched themselves out from his wrist via fire that came out from the bottom. He then charged behind the metal projectiles, using them as cover to get in close to his brother, while his focus was on the metal objects, knowing that he would have the upper hand in close quarters while using the Asur path. Naruto was surprised by the small projectiles, not having any knowledge of them due to not wanting to be present when the Asur path was used, however it didn't take a genius to know that the incoming projectiles weren't friendly. Quickly gathering his chakra, while knowing that the elements would work against such a large number of projectiles, and extending his hands in front of him. A dark blue dome surrounded Naruto, just as the first of the projectiles approached. After the first of the metal objects impacted, and exploded against his shield creating smoke that obscured the front of Naruto's view. Naruto inwardly thanked his luck, he seriously doubted that any earth shield or any shield of the elements he could make, would be able to hold up against the current onslaught. It was then that he felt a heavy object smash into his shield with a dull thud. Naruto smirked. Poor Hago. The white-haired boy said to himself. His brother mustn't have seen his shield through the smoke created by his own projectiles. If he had he would have used a much stronger attack to try to breach his shield, rather than charging. The shield was actually made out of Naruto's own chakra. This was another ability he discovered over the years. Naruto didn't actually the full extent of this ability like how large he could create structures, because there wasn't enough space in or around the monastery, or how much damage or pressure his chakra creations could take as it could withstand all of the attacks that weren't on a large scale, with the exceptions of the Diva Path's unnamed force abilities. The attacks of the Diva Path moved the chakra constructs, unless they were anchored to the ground just like anything else. There was a passive ability about his chakra constructs ability, as it had been named, that made both Hagoromo and his mother quite frustrated, though this wasn't so much an ability granted by chakra constructs, but more like a side effect his chakra had on that constructs he made. As it turns out, his chakra was incredibly dense or in other words compact. Normally this wouldn't mean anything besides meaning that Naruto had more chakra than previously thought, but the surfacing of his chakra constructs ability changed that. Because his chakra was incredibly dense this made the constructs he created harder, but also meant that they were charged with more chakra than originally thought. This had the side effect of rendering the pre-top path almost useless against him, unless they were fully touching him. This was because it made it slower to absorb the chakra from the chakra constructs he created, meaning that his mother and brother would have to grab onto the constructs or be touching them for long periods, leaving them open to attack from either himself or other constructs. It was an amusing sight to see his brother poring over books or meditating for hours, trying to find a way around the chakra constructs ability. Naruto was about to gloat to his brother when he heard two words that made his eyes whiten. Shinra Tensei, Almighty Push. All oh, crap. Naruto thought, as he was flown towards the edge of the makeshift arena, and landed on his back with a thud. Naruto groaned, as he made his way towards his feet, taking one of those diva path attacks that always hurt, even when the technique's power was lowered significantly. Looking towards his brother at the opposite end of the field, now having the normal two arms instead of six, he couldn't help, but inwardly face palm at his own stupidity. Why the hell didn't I press the advantage? Oh right, too busy with the mini flashbacks. Note to self. Have flashbacks were not sparing within close range of Hagoromo. 
As he got back into his fighting stance, ready to continue slugging it out with his brother, he was stopped by a voice. Hagoromo, Naruto, stop your spar, and come over here I must talk to you. Turning towards the voice, he noticed his mother standing near the entrance. He lowered his stance, noticing Hagoromo doing the same, and made his way over to his mother. Naruto's mother, Kagaya, had not changed much over the years, the only thing that was really different about her, were the four long objects wrapped in brown cloth she was holding, two in each hand. As they approached her, she sat down with her knees underneath her, placing the bundles on both sides of her, and gestured for them to do the same, which they did. As they sat opposite their mother, they noticed a serious look on her face. After a minute of silence, the Oni spoke. After raising you both for close to 13 years in this monastery, feeding you, clothing you, teaching you, and training you, I have come to the conclusion that in order for you both to grow both ability-wise, and, as people, it is time for us to leave the monastery. Gaia waited a moment for the questions that were sure to come, and she was not disappointed. What? Why do we have to leave? This was asked by Naruto, who was followed closely by his elder brother. I agree with Naruto, what reason would we have to leave the monastery? Hagoromo said he knew several reasons, but wanted to hear them from his mother. Kagaya was silent for a moment before speaking. This monastery, while sheltering you, and helping you grow, has left you lacking in knowledge that more common people take for granted. Things like how to interact with other people your own age, and an understanding of how the rest of the world behaves, and works. I have unfortunately stripped you when I decided to raise you both in isolation from the rest of the world. It will also hopefully help you see why I believe that peace can only be achieved through forceful means. Here she pointed, and looked at Hagoromo while he looked back defiantly, during this Naruto side. How to achieve peace has been a constant argument between mother and son, both believing that their method was the true way to achieve peace. The only reason Naruto was left out of their argument was that because Kagaya's and Hagoromo's methods completely opposed each other, and because Naruto's own method of peace was almost completely different from both of theirs. After another minute of staring at each other, Kagaya and Hagoromo broke off the staring match, and Kagaya continued speaking. There is also the fact that there isn't enough space to use truly devastating techniques without destroying the monastery, and both of you need to be able to use your abilities on a large scale. Here she turned to Hagoromo again, but this time spoke to him instead of staring. There is also the fact that some of your abilities require people in order to properly test, and I'd prefer it if you didn't use your brother as a test dummy. There are also techniques for other paths that I haven't told you about because they need large amounts of space. Before we leave however, both of you need to be able to use a weapon that won't draw attention to yourselves. Here she unveiled the four bundles, placing two in front of either brother. Both of them received a sword, a katana to be precise, both of them were almost exactly the same, the differences being the guard, and the color of cloth the hilt was wrapped in. Hagoromo had his guard in the shape of an orange magatama with purple cloth around the hilt, while Naruto had a golden guard, that was etched with the kanji for fire, wind, water, earth, and lightning in a circle, the cloth on Naruto's hilt was a dark blue, the same shade, as his chakra. The other gift Hagoromo and Naruto received was a shakage, and a staff, respectively. The shakage was a strange black metal pole with a large gold ring stuck on top, and six smaller gold rings hung from the larger ring. Naruto's staff was strange, made of the same black metal that made up Hagoromo's shakage. It has a gold topping that split, going opposite ways before the sides pointed down, making the top look like an M shape. Both boys were speechless, the weapons were amazing. Where did you get these? Hagoromo asked after a minute to fully take in the weapons in front of him. The two swords were in the armory when I originally arrived here. The other two weapons were made by me. Kagaya replied to both boys' shocked features. Their mother had made these. How? Naruto asked. I used an aspect of the Rinnegan to create them both. She said simply. This shocked Hagoromo slightly more than Naruto. Hagoromo had thought he'd seen the majority of the abilities his mother wielded with the Rinnegan, although he knew that there were some abilities he hadn't seen, hence why he wasn't surprised when his mother told him he needed more space for some abilities. But to hear that there was something that could create things was a shock, why had his mother not shown him this, and more importantly when did she figure this out? Kasan, when did you learn how to do this, and why didn't you show me? The technique was most likely not destructive since neither myself nor Naruto have heard anything, so why the secrecy? Hagoromo questioned, though he knew there was most likely a reason, he was quite upset about not even knowing about the ability. Because Hagoromo, Kagaya said simply, like she was chiding him. The technique I used to create the weapons you see before you is the pinnacle ability of the Rinnegan. This is something that took me years to get right, and just creating those weapons cost me the majority of my chakra. This is not a technique to take lightly. She then closed her eyes, and released a breath. She opened her eyes, as she began to speak, her white eyes staring into the two children before her. I learned this technique several years ago. Here she turned to her eldest. Hagoromo, what do you know about how I got my eyes, and chakra? Kagaya questioned. Hagoromo frowned not seeing the point in such a question, but answered it anyway, hoping it would give him the answers he desired. 
You told us that you ate the chakra fruit that grew every thousand years from the base of the Shinju tree, that you blacked out, then awoke with a changed appearance. Hagoromo refrained from questioning what the point of that was. You are correct, Hagoromo, and that is what makes my Rinnegan different from yours. Hagoromo brows furrowed in questioning while Kagaya, who saw the beginnings of the question on his lips, held up a hand to hold him from speaking so she could talk. Throughout this Naruto sat there silently knowing he had nothing to really speak about in this matter. It was between his mother and brother. The difference between your Rinnegan and mine, Hagoromo, is that to unlock your Rinnegan's abilities is a combination of instincts, as seen when you unlock the pre-top path, along with experimentation and practice. My abilities however surface the same way as yours with the addition of another way, meditation. What I have realized over the course of my life with the Rinnegan is that all my abilities were already unlocked, however the shock of my new abilities, as well as my other eyes fought for dominance, had the side effect of forcing my instinctually knowledge of my eye to the back of my mind, and that it is only recently through meditation have very surface. Here Kagaya paused before speaking in a more hesitant voice, something that her horned sons rarely ever heard, she was usually so sure of herself. It is also my belief that the instinctual knowledge that is received with the unlocking of the Rinnegan's abilities will fade over the generations, and that it will eventually disappear completely. This is because it has already started with you Hagoromo, from what you have told me of your instincts. They are already noticeably weaker than my own, though that will not impact on your overall strength. Pause, letting her eldest soak up the information while she inwardly debated over what to do next. I will have to eventually tell them. She thought, frowning internally, not wanting to let her son see her inner turmoil. They need to know the reason why I have trained them. Despite the faith she had in her sons, she was still worried it wasn't enough to face what was coming, or that one of them would do something stupid. I must have faith in them to do what must be done. Kagaya took a deep breath, willing herself to calm down while simultaneously squashing the doubts that lingered in her mind. Her children could do this, they had to. Hagoromo, Naruto. She called getting the twins' attention. It was quite funny when she thought about it, if she hadn't given birth to the children before her, she would have never thought they were twins, it was almost laughable. One was a calm, incredibly intelligent, mostly quiet, ripple-eyed, red-haired boy, the other was a sometimes loud white-haired child, white-eyed child that hid his surprising intelligence under his mask, if it could be called that. In fact the only reason one would think they were related would be the horns that adorned both their heads, otherwise they could have been born in two completely different families. Shaking herself out of those thoughts, she returned to the present. It is time I told you why I started your training. This got both boys' attention, as far as they knew their mother wanted them to control their powers, so they wouldn't accidentally kill someone. Noticing her children straightening up, showing how much attention they were paying here, she continued. Almost 13 years ago, I felt a being of some sort gaining power rapidly. At first I thought that someone else had eaten the Shinju's fruit, but I immediately discarded that idea, as I had already eaten the fruit some years before. After inspecting the being's energy I realized that it was incredibly similar to my own chakra. At the time I would have investigated, but the two of you had been born, and I wasn't about to move around with two newborn babies. So I decided to stay here at the monastery. Here she took a breath before continuing to speak. It was only later that I realized what it was, as well as why it was gaining power. It was Shinju. Ignoring the intake of breath she heard from both her sons she continued. And the reason it was gaining power or awakening was because it was after its chakra. Here she paused looking directly at her sons. However I realized it was not the chakra I possessed, as it was too similar to its own to notice, otherwise it would have started to wake, as soon as I ate its fruit. No, I realized that what it was after, was the chakra my two sons possessed. Hearing this both sons froze, partially in fear, and also shock. How are you meant to feel when you find out that a god is coming after you? Something that couldn't be destroyed, a primordial force, a being with almost unlimited power was coming at you with a single mission to destroy you, and most likely anything in its path. To both Hagoromo and Naruto's credit they didn't cry with the knowledge that their impending doom could be coming. After several minutes of both brothers just staring at nothing, Hagoromo asked a question that plagued both their minds. How long do we have? Hagoromo asked, while his mind went over the importance of the answer both himself and his brother would receive. One answer could give them a little bit of hope that perhaps against all odds, they could win against the beast that they would face in the future. The other answer could devastate them, it could crush all the hope, life, and spirit out of their bodies. Hagoromo prayed it wasn't the latter. I don't know. Kagaya confessed honestly. She truly had no idea how long they would have. It could be anywhere from a day to several years. The only thing I know for sure is that you will face the Shinju eventually. At least we will all face it together, right Kasen? Hagoromo said, while praying that they had several more years to get stronger. When he didn't hear his mother respond, he asked again, this time slightly nervous about the answer. Kasen. Kagaya sighed before answering. No, unfortunately Hagoromo, I cannot help you defeat the Shinju. Knowing that she was most likely going to get interruptions from Hagoromo and Naruto, she was quick to continue. 
It is not that I will not help you, but rather I cannot help. Here she sighed. Because the fruit I ate contained its chakra, my chakra is now too similar to it to do any damage, because all of my attacks are laced with my chakra, all I would be doing is giving it energy to use against you whenever my attacks connect. In fact if my theory is right if I get in close enough proximity, it could simply absorb all the chakra I have in my body out through my skin, and since my body is so accustomed to chakra now, the shock my body would feel from losing my chakra would most likely kill me. Here she sighed again. She seemed to be doing that a lot lately. With enough time, my chakra may change so that I might be able to harm the Shinju, but by the time that happens, it may have already awoken. Even then it would take so long that by the time my chakra is different from the Shinju's, I will most likely be an old woman, and I won't be able to help you at all, with my body being too frail. After that she stayed silent, knowing they would need a lot of time, to fully take everything she told them in. Both boys were completely frozen, not only would they have to take on an entity, that was basically a god, but to do it without their mother. It was a heavy blow. Kachan. This time it was Naruto talking with an oddly serious face. Kagaya could count the number of times Naruto had been truly serious on two hands. Kagaya was snapped out of her internal thoughts by Naruto's voice. Kachan, be honest. Do you think me and Hagoromo have a chance of beating the Shinju? Naruto's voice was neutral, not betraying how he felt. His mother knew that this was an important question for him, and Hagoromo, who was silently listening. The mother of two looked between both her sons before responding. I believe that. No. Kagaya was cut off by Naruto uttering a single word. It wasn't loud, said in a commanding tone, or even accompanied by an action, and yet that single word cut Kagaya off, halting anything she was going to say. Both Kagaya and Hagoromo were surprised by Naruto. I asked you to be honest. Naruto's words were soft yet hard, cutting through the silence of the garden like a warm knife through butter. No, no I believe her I feel. Yes or no. After Naruto finished speaking, silence reigned, as the two eldest of the Sasuke family took time to take in what just happened. It was unusual for Naruto to ever demand anything, even, as a child Naruto rarely wanted anything, preferring to play with what he had. But even a deaf person could have heard the demand that was in Naruto's words. It was a sobering experience for both Hagoromo and Kagaya. It seemed they had been fooled by the childish mask that Naruto wore, having forgotten that underneath there was an intellect that could rival Hagoromo in aspects, and along with, what Kagaya believes from what she just heard, a side that can be hard, cold, and mean in every way. It was a real wacky call for two of the thrill Suzuki. It seemed that even they had forgotten just who Naruto could truly be if he wanted to, and were drawn into believing his mask. While both Kagaya and Hagoromo knew Naruto would never turn evil or use his powers to purposely harm others, it made them pity whoever had Naruto as an enemy. Kagaya blinked before remembering the question. After a few seconds to think about it, she presented her answer to Naruto. Yes, with the right training. Naruto didn't verbally answer, instead choosing to nod his head. After several minutes of silence, it was broken by Hagoromo asking a question. When will we be leaving the monastery? This could mess up some of his projects he had been working on while he was staying in the monastery. Hopefully they won't be leaving soon. Do not worry about your projects, Hagoromo. His mother said, as if reading his mind. We will not be leaving for maybe a few years, as both you and your brother must practice with both of your weapons, perhaps even creating individual styles for them if you are proficient enough. Naruto frowned for a second, thinking over the reason for having the weapons, before opening his mouth. But Kachan, I have my chakra channeling for my abnormal strength, and Hagoromo has the Asura path. Why would I need weapons at all? But Kagaya shook her head slightly. This is what I mean by not knowing how the world works. She said with a slight apology. In the outside world it isn't normal for some to use hand-to-hand -hand fighting style to beat a samurai or sword wielder. The extra reach of the sword, and the sharp blade are usually enough, to ward off anyone from fighting someone with them. However, if you defeat anyone with a sword, no matter who it is, it won't attract as much attention, as it would, if you beat them barehanded. As she finished speaking, the family descended into silence for several moments before Hagoromo asked one last question. Kasan, could I see the technique you used to create my shakage, and my brother's staff? Creating something from nothing sounds like an interesting ability. Hagoromo inquired, the ability sounded amazing with its possibilities having the potential to be limitless. Kagaya nodded, but gave no verbal reply. She extended her hands, and held them out palms up while closing her eyes like in meditation. Slowly, a red flame sprang to life in her left, and while simultaneously, a blue one appeared in her right. Both of the flames continued to grow in size, yet there was surprisingly no heat from either of them like a normal flame. The flames stopped growing once they had completely encased both hands in their respective colors, they both continued to flicker, and both around like they were swaying in a breeze. Suddenly, Kagaya lifted her hands slightly before turning her palms to face each other, still shrouded in their respective colors, before slamming them together. The bright light exploded out from where her hands met, blinding both the boys, who looked away, and their mother, who closed her eyes, before the light slowly dimmed. 
as the last of the light faded away, and both boys could look at their mother more specifically, her palms again, they found her palms now open like a flat scroll, and occupied. The butterfly, a black and blue butterfly was calmly in her palms, inspecting its surroundings before it took off, fluttering out of Kagaya's hands, and Reach, while well, Hagoromo, and Naruto followed it with their distinctive eyes, as it flew up, around the garden, and out into the world beyond the monastery. Both boys then turned to their mother wide-eyed. She internally smirked at their expressions, pleased that she could still shock them from time to time. That, she said, was what I like to call Banbutsu SMZM, creation of all things. It has the ability to create anything the wielder desires. After several seconds of stunned silence from Kagaya's children, Naruto leant over and whispered into Hagoromo's ear, while his eyes were still focused on his mother. You know how I got over my jealousy of your eyes. Naruto left no space for a reply, instead continuing to whisper. I lied. That was totally cool. Hagoromo chose to ignore him in favor of asking his mother a question. How did you do that? He asked. What did you use? Chakra. She said simply. Well not chakra entirely, more like the aspects of chakra being used to create something new. Here both Kagaya and Hagoromo missed the pensive look Naruto got on his face. After uncovering my instinctual memories of Banbutsu SMZM, creation of all things, I discovered that two things are required to create chakra. I named the two aspects yin and yang, they represent the spiritual, like my illusions, and physical, like your enhanced strength, respectively. Yin was the blue flame with yang, as the red. Yin is used to bring what is imagined into reality, while yang is used to breathe in vitality. Together they create something from nothing. However this is not a technique to take lightly, it took me years to be able to craft both of your weapons to my standard. When, Hagoromo, and I know you will try to perform this technique, do not expect to make quick progress. As she finished up her explanation, she decided that they had talked enough today, and that any more information she gave most likely wouldn't stick. As she stood up, she prompted both of them to do the same, which they did, rising with their weapons in hand. That is enough explanation for one day. You both have the rest of the day off to work on your own projects. If either of you need anything I will be in my room resting. As Kagaya traveled back to her room to rest, and reflect on the day's events, and Hagoromo decided to meditate in front, he eventually learned not to do it over the pond, Naruto decided to do some training. Arriving in one of the two large former praying rooms, Naruto immediately closed the door to the room, wanting to keep what he was doing under wraps. As he stood in the middle of the room, he raised his arms, creating a 90 degree angle with his palms up, and willed a ball of water to appear in the palm of one hand, while doing the same for a ball of wind to appear in the other. Yin and Yang. He murmured. Aspects of chakra being used to make something new. He echoed his mother. As he slowly moved both palms, and therefore, both elements, the ball of wind glowed a dull blue, while the water did the same in a dull red color. Finally both came together, joining completely, and a cruel tingling sensation crawled up his arms. Watching closely he watched, as the water froze, as it absorbed the ball of wind, and the water, and wind disappeared, leaving in their place, a completely smooth ball of pure ice hovering just above his left palm. With a mere thought, the newly created ball of ice rose, before flattening itself. And now disc of ice slowly started to rotate at an increasing speed, before it shot forward slicing through the air like it was a katana through the parchment of a scroll, it went so fast that Naruto actually lost track of it. Suddenly there was a horrible screeching sound from the wall opposite Naruto's position. Walking towards where the noise originated from, Naruto was greeted with a surprising sight. There was no ice disc on the floor or even embedded in the wall, at first Naruto simply thought that the disc shattered into tiny pieces, but quickly dismissed that thought. The sound he heard didn't match that possibility, looking around the area, he was about to give up when he noticed something. A thin line, about, as thick as two pieces of parchment placed on top of each other, with the width of Naruto's waist if he had to guess, the cut itself was several centimeters deep. Unbelievable Naruto thought in awe. Such strength in the ice is meant to be impossible. It should have shattered, as soon as it hit the wall, but it didn't. Most likely because of the side effect of being made by chakra. This was incredible, Naruto didn't know, if the ice disc was still in the ice, but right now he didn't care, the simple fact, that the ice had cut the stone was amazing, let alone cutting several centimeters deep. I created ice by combining wind with water, and if what Kasan said is true, some yin and yang chakra, with both of them going into a separate element. If I count fire, water, lightning, wind, and earth, as the basic elements that means there are another 10 possible elements that I can learn. However, this only counts, if I only combine 2 elements at a time, what if I combine 3, 4 or even 5 elements at once? Then there are also the elements that are encompassed of others like crystal, and metal, and if what my instincts are telling me, although crystal, and metal aren't part of the 5 basic elements, and they can be made by combining chakra natures, I should still be able to use them despite that. Naruto decided to follow his mother's example after discovering his ability to combine elements, whether this was another ability, or he had unlocked another part of his ability to use the elements, he didn't know. 
But what he did know was that he was tired, both emotionally and physically, and his feuding was calling him. XXXXXXX. Hi, Wall Town was well known within the land of the Lightning Daemon, known as one of the most fortified towns in Lightning Country. The village, as the name suggests, has a 10 meter high wall made of stone that runs around the perimeter, along with numerous guards that were posted along the ramparts of the wall. The addition of the forest that began several meters from the town's wall and circled all the way around, as well as the fact that it was built near the base of a mountain, only added to the defenses the village had. Because of the level of security of the town, it had, over the years, become a trading hub for Lightning Country, with numerous stalls and stands that sold everything from food to clothes to weapons, and, if you knew where to look, slaves. The side effect of the booming business during the day gave the town a seedy underbelly to go with it that was a home to prostitutes, murderers, criminals, and mercenaries alike. The corruption in the village wasn't incredibly high, which was lucky all things considered. The worst case of corruption the town faced so far was a guard being paid to look the other way for a few seconds. But it was bound to get worse eventually. It was midday, with the sun high in the sky, when the guards of the trading hub first spotted something out of the ordinary. It started as a spot that appeared at the end of a road that led to the village, but slowly morphed into three silhouettes that then morphed into three people in monks' robes. While all three had their hoods up, it was obvious that two were male, while the last was a female. However, there was a fact about them that made the guards nervous about them, because High Town, as a trading hub, also acquired a following of bandits that plagued the roads to and from the village, ambushing anyone they believed they could rob. Because of this many people had taken to hiring mercenaries and samurai bodyguards to escort them to and from the village. However, the three travelers that were approaching the village had no such escort, or at least no escort that the guards could see. This could mean several things, 1, they had hidden guards, which was likely. 2, the two males were the guards for the women which was also likely, but judging from how they all wore monks clothes, properly not. 3, all their guards had been killed on the way towards the village, however this had no evidence to suggest that, when guards die, the clients usually run, as fast, as they can screaming, but the three that were walking calmly. Finally, they could be some of the increasingly rare few who could survive walking around without guards, usually people who can do that turn into a mercenary. It was the last option that scared the guards the most, whenever the bandits that stalk the roads become too much of a problem, the samurai are usually ordered to go into the woods to clean them out. This usually involves several losses for the invading party, as the samurai's armor is for one-on-one -on -one fights in an open area, not a dense forest that the bandits live in. The armor of the samurai is bulky, meant for endurance, and therefore can't match up against the speed and flexibility that the bandits have with little to no armor on. It was because of all this that the samurai on the ramparts were wary of the three travelers. There was no way they could have traveled through the forest without encountering at least one group of bandits. If they could travel through the woods that surrounded the fortified town and come out without a scratch or drop of blood to stain their clothes, the samurai truly doubted that they would be able to do anything but slow them down. As the three travelers got closer to the large village gates, the guards that stood outside the village near the gates approached them, all the while inwardly praying that the obviously strong travelers weren't looking to start trouble. As the guards approached the two male figures fell in line with the female one, one of them on either side, like guards flanking a client. Neither of the approaching guards could see the full faces of the three robe-wearing travelers, the only visible part of the face they could see was the mouth, the rest of it being blocked out by a head attached to the robes they were wearing. It slightly unsettled the guards, the hoods added a bit of menacing aura around them, the kind that instinctively warned people that they were powerful, and that to fight them was suicide. Hello there travelers. The first guard said, trying to not let his fear show in his voice. What brings you to High Town? It was the female of the trio that spoke. Greetings guardsmen. She said with her voice gave no hint of her mood. Both I and my sons are wishing to enter your town and stock up on supplies before continuing on our pilgrimage. Your monks. He said, surprised, and a bit suspicious, momentarily forgetting about the potential strength the three before him could have. What proof of this claim do you have? For a moment none of the three moved, until the two companions reached into their cloaks, while the guards who could see the action all tensed simultaneously. They let their bodies relax however when instead of pulling out swords, both of the males pulled out what looked like monk staffs, one with gold rings that made a clunk noise, as it moves, the other with a gold M-shaped cap on the top, both of the staves had a shaft made of a strange black metal. Is this enough proof? The voice of the woman of the group jarred him out of his thoughts. There was now an undertone of annoyance that the guard recognized, having dealt with many nobles and upper class visitors before. I apologize, Ming San apologized to the man, giving a small bow when he did so. But I had to be certain. You never can let your guard down in times like these. Forgive my rude manners, and please enjoy your stay at High Town, the trading hub of the Land of Lightning. As the last bit was said, the guard gave a motion to one of the guards on the stone ramparts, and the large gates of the town opened to the three travelers. The village that the three hooded travelers found themselves in was a lively one. 
There were stalls that lined the street that constantly had several customers at any one time. Children were walking along with parents, pointing out to their parents the things they would like from the various stalls that lined the street. All in all, it was quite a surreal experience for all three of the travelers. Would that be how my sons act had I not taken them away and trained them? It was quite strange how to see the various children that were around and imagine her sons taking their place. She couldn't quite imagine it, the mere thought of calm and patient Hagoromo jumping up and down pointing at something he wanted seemed so ridiculous. Even Naruto acting like these children seemed far-fetched, because while he was a ball of energy when he was younger, he had never really asked for anything. So the idea of him demanding something like these children, and in some cases, throwing a temper tantrum was laughable at best. Oblivious to their mothers, thought the two men on either side of her, with staves in hand, looked around at the houses, stalls, and people. The majority of their thoughts were on how weak all of them looked, having been raised and trained by their mother, who valued and prized strength, it was quite hard to see these people as anything but weak. While Hagoromo tried to look at this from the people's perspective, thinking about how they didn't have chakra, or how they didn't have someone like his mother to guide them, Naruto had no such qualms. Akami these people are so weak. He mentally raved. I know they don't have chakra, but most of these people look like they've never been in a fight in their life. It's ridiculous, a strong wind from me could blow most of these people over. While Naruto's views on the residents of the village may seem harsh, Naruto had experienced a mental maturing over the three or so years since they had been told of what Hagoromo and himself would have to face in the future. The now 16-year-old had become more serious, only becoming his old self in rare moments to help lower the tension between his mother and brother. The white-haired boy inwardly frowned when he thought over the tension between his mother and brother. Hagoromo's rising determination to help the innocent people of the elemental nations had started to cause a rift between him and his mother, who still maintained the belief that it had to be destroyed for peace. In Naruto's opinion, Hagoromo's belief on how peace should be achieved is idealistic and foolish, bordering on stupid. Though don't get Naruto wrong, he wished that achieving peace would be as easy as Hagoromo says it is, but Naruto knows that won't be the truth. Peace will be achieved through blood and war by mistakes. That is how Naruto believes that peace will be made when people realize their own stupidity. Naruto believes that both his brother's and mother's method to peace has the same problem, what happens when they are gone to enforce the peace. When he had asked this question to his mother and brother, both had simply said that they would choose a successor. What successor? Naruto mentally swore. The one that will magically pop out of the ground with the power, wisdom, and desire to uphold their own version of peace, with the ability to choose the perfect successor for themselves, as well. What happens if they become corrupt? It's impossible, besides, who has chakra other than the three of us, unless one of them wants to ask the Shinju for the job. Naruto asked himself sarcastically. Let's go, my sons. His mother's voice snapped him out of his thinking. It is time to go get supplies before we find somewhere to rest for the night. Tomorrow we must be out of the village by mid if we are to reach our destination at our desired time. Once we have bought the food we need, we will seal it in one of Hagoromo's scrolls when we reach a private place. As she finished speaking she started to walk forward and into the maze of stalls. Both boys made no sound, instead setting off after their mother, wanting to make sure they kept her in their sights. The town was incredibly large, and with no indication of where you were going it was easy to get lost, or lose the people you were traveling with. Naruto realized both of these things, as he wandered around a relatively deserted street, a couple of hours later. It was obviously one of the darker areas of the town that his mother had warned him about, he could feel the eyes of people in the shadows of alleyways. The gazes that were full of hostile intent that would make a lesser man a nervous wreck, but Naruto was not a lesser man. He had done and seen things that would make the fools in the shadows die of fear. Simply looking at him with the desire to kill him wasn't going to do a thing beyond piss him off. He was so caught up in his thoughts that he almost didn't feel the small hand that tried to sneakily weave itself under his robe from behind and search around for something. Utilizing his reflexes, Naruto spun around and grabbed the hand at the wrist with his free hand, causing the owner of the hand to start trying to yank it away to no avail. Turning to the perpetrator, he was surprised to find it to be a little girl, no older than 7 or 8, wearing what, at one point in time, looked like to be clothes, but now appeared to be rags that hung from her body. She had blonde hair, a surprising color, with violet eyes that looked at him with fear. When the girl realized that she wasn't going to get her hand free, she started to cry. Slowly at first, but eventually the girl started crying like there was no tomorrow, wet tracks staining her cheeks. She seemed to be mumbling something, but it was impossible to tell underneath all of her crying. Naruto looked around in hope that someone would help him, maybe take the kid off his hands, or even tell him what to do because he sure as hell didn't. It was obvious she was an orphan, the rags were enough to give that away, the question was though, why wasn't she in an orphanage? He knew that there had to be one in the village. Eventually, Naruto decided to try and calm the girl down. Bending down to her level, his hands still around her wrist, he tried to talk to the girl. Hey, it's okay. It's okay. 
I'm not going to hurt you, alright? He asked in what he hoped was a calming tone. All he was going off was what his mother told him she did when he used to cry, as a baby. He didn't know if it would work, but it was all he had at the moment. Thankfully, it appeared to be enough, and the girl finally seemed to stop crying, and was starting to hiccup, but the tears still streaked down her face. It was actually saddening to him, he didn't even know why. Maybe it's my brother rubbing off on me with his protect the innocent stuff. Naruto thought idly. Deciding that he wouldn't be able to get this child to stop crying in the middle of the street, he extended his senses out, and found a dead-end alleyway that wasn't occupied by people he would have to kill. Deciding that it would be better to go down the alley before one of his watchers decided to attack him, Naruto picked the girl up, and settled her, so that she was being held in one arm, while the other continued to hold his staff. When Naruto lifted the girl up she gave a yelp in surprise before freezing up in his arms, he wondered why that was before choosing to just ask her why. Walking to the very end of the alley Naruto sat himself down on his behind, the staff beside him, and the still frozen girl now settled in his lap, and pulled the girl into a hug like he remembered his mother used to. The girl was still frozen at first, but slowly moved her arms around his neck, and once again started to cry. Naruto at first thought he'd done something wrong, and was going to pull away, until he realized just why this girl was crying. His mother had mentioned that sometimes people will cry for different reasons other than being sad, perhaps this was one of them. Anyway, Naruto continued to hold the poor girl while she cried, until all that came out were hiccups again, before he slowly felt her stop moving. She wasn't dead, Naruto could tell by the rise, and fall of her chest, so she only slept. She cried herself to sleep, Naruto was confused. I didn't know you could do that. Kami, the rest of the world is weird. After thinking about it a bit, Naruto decided to stay where he was, and wait for the blonde girl to wake up. There was no point in searching for his mother, and brother, as they would find him eventually, and he wasn't going to wake up the girl now. She looked exhausted, if the bags under her eyes were any indication, and frankly Naruto couldn't muster up the energy to wake her. It was almost an hour before the girl woke up, as she opened her eyes wearily, and blinked out the blurriness, that it invaded her vision she thought back to the last thing she remembered. I was trying to steal something from some guy in a dress, when he caught me, and the girl's eyes snapped open, as she remembered what happened, and her body froze, it was then she realized that she had her arms around the stranger's neck, and her head on his shoulder. At first she thought he was asleep, but this theory was proved wrong when he spoke to her. Are you awake now girl? He asked. Are you going to tell me why you wanted to steal from me? The voice held no accusation or anger, only curiosity, though it was not like the girl's mind could tell the difference between them. As she started to tremble, the blonde-haired girl heard the man sigh. But girl I'm not going to hurt you, okay? If I wanted to hurt you, I could have done that when you were sleeping. This didn't seem to help the girl, as she continued to tremble. Naruto was about to speak again, when he heard her mumble something over, and over again from his shoulder. I'm sorry. She murmured the fear obvious in her voice. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry just don't hurt me. At the end, she tightened her grip around his neck, not enough to hurt the male, but enough to be noticeable. Naruto didn't say anything for a minute, simply thinking over what the girl had said, and what he could do. Finally, he just decided to do what his mother did when he was little. The girl flinched at first, when she first felt something touch her back, but, as she screwed her eyes closed, and tensed her body, waiting for the hit, she felt nothing. Slowly relaxing after she didn't feel any pain, she realized that the man was putting his arms around her. It's okay. He whispered in her ear. Don't worry girl, you're safe. I promise. As she finally realized that no strike would come from the person holding her, she began to relax into the embrace. Slowly however, the man tried to pull himself out of the hug, but the girl had other ideas, clinging to the man liking to parchment. No? The girl cried internally. Please don't go, please. She didn't want this stranger to go, he was nice. He gave her a hug, he made her feel safe, and she wanted him to stay. The man, sensing her please, chuckled. Don't worry girl, I'm not going anywhere. I just want to get a look at you, okay? The girl didn't move for a few seconds before very slowly eased herself off him, until she was sitting back on his lap with his arms on her shoulders to reassure her that he wouldn't leave. It was then she realized that she couldn't see his face, as it was underneath the hood. Now, are you going to tell me why you tried to steal from me? He asked with a questioning tone. The girl seemed to squirm under his invisible gaze that she could feel staring her straight in the eye. She then looked down, and mumbled something inaudible. What was that? Naruto asked the girl. A little bit loud next time, okay? The girl, still looking down, gave her answer. I was hungry. She said quietly. The words, while louder than before, were still quiet. Naruto internally frowned, being careful to not show it on his face, lest he scare the poor girl. While his mother had told both himself and Hagoromo about how some people couldn't eat because sometimes there wasn't enough food, but there was plenty in this town. He had gotten lost in shops that sold food. How could she be hungry? Are you not being fed enough? He asked. Do people not give you enough food to eat? The answer made Naruto's blood boil, and his chakras surge. 
No one gives me anything. The girl said with her head still down to avoid the man's gaze, not wanting to see the disappointed look that she knew would be on his face. I have to steal stuff to eat. After using several meditation techniques he knew to calm himself down, Naruto knew that, if he didn't, before he asked another question, the answer would most likely go on a rampage. Why are you on the street? Don't you have an orphanage to go to? Naruto questioned, while praying that the answer was good enough to not warrant him going on a killing spree. Unfortunately, it wasn't. I don't know what an orphanage is, she said, trying to sound out the word orphanage. But I lost my Ka-chan, and Tu chan She continued sniffling at the end. I don't know where they are. Tears were appearing in the corners of her eyes. Naruto, to his credit, didn't show any outward reaction. Internally however was a different story. So she isn't an orphan, just lost. He thought. That's a bit better. I thought I might have had to do something drastic. Thankful, his thoughts of violence were halted by a question from the girl. Um, Mansan, why are you wearing a dress? I thought only girls could wear dresses. After that comment, the girl's seven-year-old mind came to one conclusion. Mansan, are you really a girl? That question was met by utter silence. A twitch developed above Naruto's eyebrow gave away his annoyance. No, it's not a dress, and I'm not a woman. He managed to get out. Why would she think he's wearing a dress? But I see other women wear stuff like that. She asked with a childlike innocence. Childlike innocence my ass. Naruto thought. She's asking these questions on purpose, I know it. Naruto inhaled a deep breath of air, to calm down before he did something he regretted. Girl, it's not a dress, it's a monk's robe. As he saw the girl open her mouth, most likely to tell him that it was a dress, he quickly asked another question to help divert the girl's attention. What's your name, kid? The little girl smiled at the question, happy that someone seemed to be paying attention to her. My name's Akari. What's yours? She asked curiously. To Naruto's happiness, she seemed to have forgotten he was wearing a dress. Thank Kami for the children's short attention span. He idly thought. My name's Naruto, nice to meet you Akari. Naruto smiled, reassuring the violet-eyed child. Giving the child a look over, Naruto noted that she seemed quite thin, more so than a normal child for her age should be. She must be starving. He noted. After pondering what to do for a minute, Naruto decided to take the child to get something to eat for her, as well as for himself. It was definitely past lunch, if the sun's position in the sky was any indication. Smiling to the girl, he was about to ask her what she wanted to eat, when his senses alerted him to the fact that they weren't alone in the alley. Turning his attention to the entrance of the alley, he noted that it was just some of the lowlifes that plagued the area he was in. He was about to give them the opportunity to leave, when he felt Akari wrap her arms around his neck, and tense. His observations were cut off by the leader of the thugs speaking to him. Alright boy, time to hand over all your money. Do that, and we won't hurt you or your little friend. The leader of the thugs said. Judging by the, not so quiet snickering, that was going on behind him, it was obvious, that he wasn't going to keep true to his word. Naruto idly noted that he was going to have to knock these people out to avoid any more conflict. Well he could kill them, and he wouldn't really bat an eye at getting rid of the scum before him, he didn't know about how that would affect the girl, that was currently clinging to him like a lifeline with her head, buried in his shoulder. Both Hagoromo and himself had been killed before on the trek from the monastery to the town they were currently in, they had been told by their mother why they should kill some people. Even Hagoromo, with his goal to save the world with peace, understood that sometimes people had to be killed to save the peace, he wouldn't go around killing unless there was no choice, but he still understood why he needed to kill. Naruto on the other hand understood that people needed to die in order to make the world a better place, he understood that in order to help the world that you sometimes had to get dirty. While Naruto wouldn't kill anyone that got in his way like his mother most likely would, he wouldn't make killing a last resort either. He would kill when he thought the world could do better without the person in front of him, but wouldn't kill people just because he didn't like them. Unfortunately, the girl he was holding knew nothing about that, she was seven after all. Reasons for killing someone shouldn't even occur to her, however she most likely knew that killing was wrong, and therefore would most likely assume Naruto was evil, not that he was. Naruto's, and Hagoromo's mother, over the course of three years trailed into them just what the rest of the world thought was normal. A person killing several people when it wasn't their job description, especially when they had the power to knock them out, was not normal, and could get Naruto into trouble if anyone caught him. So knocking them out was the best course of action, he decided. First however, he had to get Akari off him so he could move properly. Akari. He whispered in her ear. Don't worry, I won't let them hurt you, I promise. Just let me get up, and I'll deal with them. His words seemed to work, and slowly the girl got off him to sit by his side. Naruto then got up while grabbing his staff, and slowly walked towards the thugs. You know, he said, as if nothing was wrong. I'm going to give all you bastards a concussion. That's it for today guys. I hope you enjoyed my video. And see you in the next part of this video. Till then, sayonara.